over, Connor. The town is divided. They'll tear you limb from limb. Madison, you did it. Whoa. You are going to tell me everything right now. Before the Connors and the McMahon settled here 150 years ago, we were nomads, traveling from town to town. Our curse prevented us from staying in one place for too long. We were beholden to the moon and easily exposed. And then you found Connor Creek. And not a moment too soon. The abnormal effects of the silver mines made it so that we could control our powers and live amongst the humans who had joined our settlement over the years. They were none the wiser. We were searching for a cure, but we found a home. You mean Connor Creek was established on a lie? And this entire time we've been cohabitating with... Ugh. You know, other than the genetic anomaly that causes us to turn into vicious carnivorous beasts, we're really quite similar, you and me. Hmm. You see, my family, the Connors, enjoyed life with the humans. It was simple and fulfilling. But the McMahon clan had a different idea about how to govern the town. They just killed off and scared villagers to exert their dominance over the town. And we Connors weren't gonna stand for that. And that's when the werewolf wars began. Well, uh, sort of. Uh, there was fighting in shadows. Unbeknownst to our human friends. Lives were lost on both sides, but eventually the Connors defeated the McMahons. And banished them from the town, never to be heard from again? Until today. Our clan never quite reestablished control after all the fighting. It left us weak. Connor Creek moves forward, and we've been struggling to catch up ever since. <sighs> well, as we say in Connor Creek. That is good enough. I'll call off the task force, but I'm not sure how long we can keep this covered up. <laughs> I mean, shit. How have you guys kept it a secret for this long? Artie. Memory is a foggy thing. Plus, I ripped out these pages. Mm-hmm. We, we need to, to talk, talk about, about the podcast. podcast. Whoa. Twin tuition. That was the best one we've had in a while. <laughs> you go first. All right. We can't reveal their secret. At least we both agree on that, right? Um... Yes. Artemis, these are people's lives. I said I agree. All right. But you do have to admit that if we did spill the beans, we would be at the forefront of the most incredible discovery of all time. Artie, I will eat you. I'm kidding. I just wanted to acknowledge it out loud once. All right, well, leave the jokes to me, OK? Let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, you want us to leave the lights on, Dr. Edwards? This is fun. Well, can't say it's been a pleasure, but this trip certainly has been an eventful one, hasn't it? Speaking of trips, Madison told me that that Truman character was poisoned in the water supply with LSD, which explains these crazy hallucinations we've been having about these wolves, you know? Can you believe it? We were literally scared to death. But to be honest with y'all, I was quite taken with the experience, and I will be experimenting with psychedelics in the future. Well then! All right, here are your bus tickets back to La La Land. You will be missed. Wait, uh, bus tickets? Yes, about that. Um, we forgot your vehicle in the woods, and last we checked, a family of raccoons did, in fact, make it their home. So we just want to respect that ecosystem and let it be for now. Uh, LSD? That was the best you could come up with. Hey, it's working so far. We're simple folk. Well, most of us are. Uh, right, because some of us are where... Shh. So I guess this is goodbye. 
thank you for the hospitality and for allowing us to tell your story and for saving our lives. <laughs> Anytime. Happy to have made some friends in the process. A good way to thank us would be uh, by keeping all this little hush-hush. Hmm? How do you mean? I can't tell you how to write your radio play, but I do trust that you'll make the best decision when it comes to what parts you leave out. Oh, yeah, okay, like the werewolf parts. Shh, come on. I'm sorry. Thank you. Artemis, thank you for your service. Paul, I brought you something. It's a snack for the ride home. Raw meat? What? How did you? Oh my god. Have you been one of them the whole time? The whole time. <gasps> oh my god. Hey, how about one of those famous dead canary dishes to go? Nope. Bye. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> shall we? Sure. I'm hungry. Yeah. I guess you got that. Yeah, I got my snack. Need a little help? Yeah. I'm starting to think maybe I should just stay here. What? Stay here? Yeah. Here? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like one of them now. Oh, jeez. Don't you miss, like, food? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. And, and like, people? Well, these are people. Well, I'm looking at the numbers here, and I'm pretty pissed. From too much champagne! <laughs> This is a celebration! <laughs> oh. You want some? Oh. 50 million listens in a month! It is official. The Wayward Guide for the Untrained Eye Season 2 is a hit! A hitty hit 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 hit! God, I love it. God, it's a hit. Some congratulations are in order for the Shoehorn Twins. <laughs> How about that ending? Yeah, we figured you might have an opinion. No, I love it. And the listeners love it. Who knew that ambiguity was so in right now? I mean, it's the ending everyone wanted. No ending. What happened? Did Silas kill all those people? And, and, and why did the politician drug the entire town? It's a lot to unpack. Yeah. But you guys know what really happened. Oh, uh, no. You don't? No. But you'd tell me if you did, right? Um. Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, if there's anything left in the budget, maybe we could go back for a follow-up? Mm, yeah, about that. Um. There are some pretty massive discrepancies in your expense report. For example, there are a number of unpaid tickets in the city of Connor Creek, and the company car hasn't been returned. Just roll it into our season three budget. There it is. Good idea. I will definitely do that if you guys come back. I'm, I'm sorry, we, did, do we not have the job? We assumed after all the positive... Ah. Uh, that's where you went wrong. You assumed. And when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> Crazy millennials. So entitled. Can you hear that, please? Thanks. Great. Okay. I got a pitch for you guys. Find a new set of twins. Interview them. Maybe they're evil. Ooh, I like that. We were guide season three, Attack of the Twins. Yeah. And if they bring you guys back, it can be Attack of the uh, Two Twins. Wow. It's getting better. Okay, I like the direction this is going, the twins, so let's tease that out a bit. No, no, you know what? It's not your job. Rebecca, I need a list of uh, fraternal twins. I'll be on the balcony. <laughs> All that work, not even a guarantee of the next season. Why do we do this? Hey, well, you know, I could always 
raise an army of wolves, and then take back Connor Creek for the McMahons. God, that's so dumb, Paul. Hey, don't make fun of my family. You know, honestly, I had a feeling this might happen, so I put together a small list of potential pitches. Oh, good, a list. A commercial fisherman in New England found what they think is a mermaid in their nets, or large humanoid tracks have started to appear in the mountainous regions of North Dakota, but also some Louisiana trappers believe they've found a portal to hell. What? Wait, are you for real right now? Yeah. <laughs> All right, continue. Thank you. Next, a girl has made friends with a ghost dog in California. And apparently a boy from Kansas City is what appears to be Benjamin Buttoning. Um, there has been some, oh, this would be international. 